In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So good to be with you all. I'm very much looking forward to uh, very soon, and this time I'm not just saying this, very soon to when we will be in person. And so we're still working out the details of opening up the church. But I very much look forward to this whole scene being moved to the side and being replaced with the people of God. But thank you always for your faithfulness and, uh, and thank you for joining us every single day. We begin every celebration of the Mass by, in a sense, looking in the mirror. And so when we look in the mirror, we see things that we like about ourselves and we also see things that we don't like about ourselves, things that we could change. But not just on the outside, on the inside. And so we acknowledge that there are things that we don't like about ourselves, things that get in the way between us and others, us and God, and we bring those to God. But when we look in the mirror, we're not just looking at ourselves, we are looking at who God wants us to be and who God knows we can be. And so with the backdrop, as God's compassion and mercy, we acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without your mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You are being enriched in every way for all generosity, which through us produces thanksgiving to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Bless the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This weekend was a very beautiful weekend here at Blessed Sacrament, I think for the community, but also personally for me. Five Jesuits were ordained in this very space here, and I was... Uh, privileged enough to be involved with the planning and the organizing and the ceremony. And of course, it it was a huge team of people, which just made it even more beautiful. Five of my brothers were ordained. I just like to say their names. So Father Jack Kraus, Father Martin No, Father John Guile, Father Javier Benavides, and then Father Brad Mills. And I had the privilege of uh, Father Brad Mills celebrating and concelebrating the Mass with me at the 9 o'clock in Spanish. And I asked Father Brad uh, to preach, and partly it was because I thought that he would be a blessing to the community, and I have to confess also so that I didn't have to write a homily. (laughs) And it went over so well. Father Brad Mills is an incredible preacher, and he told me that he had never preached in English before. But his homily, he he said several things, and one of the things that he talked about uh, was in Northern California, he was talking about the sequoia trees of where, where he grew up. And uh, it was funny because he kept talking about how tall these trees are, how big these trees are, and this is coming from a very tall man, you know. Uh, So he was making these comparisons between him and these huge trees. But one of the things he said about these huge trees is they are constantly dropping seeds, millions upon millions upon millions of seeds, and only about 1% of those seeds actually grow into something. The rest of them just fall and nothing happens. Or the rest of them fall and die. And this, is, this can be a depressing or a discouraging thing. But the seeds keep falling. The seeds keep falling. Now that's not just an interesting biological fact. It's something that we can draw a very easy parallel with our own lives. It's so interesting to me, and I am, I'm not pointing this way, I'm pointing at me, I'm pointing at all of us, how we can be really reckless when it serves us, and we can be incredibly calculating when it serves us as well. And one of the ways that we are calculating is how we love. We love sometimes, I don't want to accuse you, um, but I want to accuse myself. Sometimes we love only in the places and in the ways that we know will benefit us. So I will only plant a seed in a way that I know, okay, it's going to grow right there, and then I can be like, look, everyone, look what I did. Look what I did. I put this seed right here, and it grew into something great. Look what I did. And someone could be like, well, you planted seeds all over there, and all of those, yeah, don't worry about those. But look at that one. I put that one there, and it grew. Check it out, right? But one of the things that Father Brad was saying was he said, sembramos semillas. He said, we sow seeds. We just sow seeds. You just throw them everywhere. You throw them everywhere without calculating, without trying to figure out whether it's going to grow there or whether it's good soil. And love is so much like this because we can think of, well, okay, if I love this person, well, it might not benefit me. If I show love to this person, it might not help my cause or it might not grow into anything. So, you know what? I'm just going to play it safe and I'm not going to love that person. 
or I'm not going to do something for this person because it might not help in the long run. And as part of this is because we live in a very capitalistic society, um, capitalist society, and we're very economic, not only with our money and our resources, but with our love. Because time is a resource, love is a resource, and we want to do something that will waste our time. But God is always inviting us into a different way of being. God is always inviting us into a different way of being. And the invitation is, sembramos semillas, right? We just, just sow seeds. Just throw them out there, and you never know what's going to happen. And it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound intentional. It sounds kind of stupid. <laughs> but the invitation is just throw, throw seeds. And of course, not just in a way that will bear fruit and we will be able to demonstrate and look, oh, look, look what I did. Maybe it's not about you. Maybe it's not about me. Maybe it's not about us. It's about something bigger than us. And I just want to give one example. Um, I had a friend who, and uh, she wouldn't mind me uh, sharing this story, but she was a musician, uh, uh, a Catholic musician. And this is no one that you know. <laughs> uh, she's a Catholic musician. And... Um, Everything she did was online. So every little thing that she did was online. It was for, it was a, a music, it was a music video or a song that she was doing. Or if she ever visited a church and like helped out with, um, with a soup kitchen, it was always online. If she met up with a friend, it was always online. Everything had to be online. And she would post stories, um, put a post on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, whatever it was. And her spiritual director once told her, you know, if you really want to grow right now, you need to go do something where you are benefiting others but are invisible, invisible, and no one will know who you are and no one will care. And she did. She, she joined a, a very small church group where no one knew who she was, and she did some service with them, and none of the, no pictures were taken of her, um, and this was really beneficial for her. And, it real, and she realized how much she was doing just to put it out there. Very good person, but there was so much of what she was doing so that others would see. We sometimes can trap ourselves and be like, you know what, the Pharisees, the Pharisees, that's a different brood or breed of people. Of course, those, these are hypocrites, right? But we can do things in very sophisticated ways and justify ourselves in very sophisticated ways and say, you know what, I'm doing this because of love, but we can trick ourselves into thinking that we are not doing them so that others may see when we really are. And that is what's so tricky about the spiritual life, and so tricky about service, and so tricky about love. Love, it can be very self-serving. We can love in very self-serving ways to always, to challenge ourselves, to love, to serve, to give to others in a way that does not benefit us or without expecting anything in return, that sometimes that's a really hard thing to do. But the challenge for us, and I'm gonna challenge all of us, I'm gonna challenge myself, do something this week that benefits someone else that no one will see. Absolutely no one. No one will see. Or, if you can, send a message or uh, call someone without expecting them to answer the phone, without expecting them to return your phone call. Do something that will be completely selfless. And it's a huge challenge because everything now is so public. Everything is now is so recorded. It's almost impossible to do something without someone noticing. Find a way. Find a way to do something good. Where no one sees it, no one notices except for God in heaven. And remember, sow seeds. Sow seeds, throw them everywhere without expecting them to grow, without expecting anyone else to recognize them. God will see and God will reward you in ways that you can't possibly fathom.
So my brothers and sisters, let us lift up our prayers to God, always keeping the common good in mind, not just our own good. And so we lift up these prayers for not only our needs, but the needs of the entire church and the entire world. So let's pray for the world that whatever direction we are headed, it is in a direction that is mutually beneficial for all. May that spirit of service and love that is not just to be seen, but for the actual care and concern for others, may that spirit prosper in our world. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pray for our church. There is so much about our church that is visible and seen and noticeable, but let's pray for all of those parts of our church that are invisible, all of those labors of love that go unnoticed, that are still important for the building of our society, the goodness of the world, and our church. May they be strengthened in the knowledge that, that the Spirit of God is working through them, even without being seen or visible. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And let's pray for the state of California. The masks have come off, but our concern for one another should still continue. And so let us be attentive to the needs of each other, be respectful of where each one of us is in this process, and that we are all still affected by the trauma of this last year, and that we are all in different places when it comes to this. May love of one another be at the forefront of our hearts and minds. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pray for those five guys who got ordained uh, this Saturday, this last Saturday, for Father Brad, for Father John, for Father Martin, for Father Javier, and for Father Jack. John, Jack, Javier, Martin, and Brad. That their vocations may continue to flourish. May God work through them, and may they be enriched by the people that they serve. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Intracair Ug Bebor family, for their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the needs of Cecilia and Roberto Inajosa. May their love flourish, and may they sow seeds wherever they go, seeds of love and service. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. So Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you, not knowing whether they will flourish or whether they they will sprout, but just throwing them out to you, having trust and faith in your ways above ours. And we pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. And therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Hosea our Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And so let us offer one another a sign or words of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. And again, keeping in mind that we will soon be able to celebrate Mass, our daily Masses, together in person. Let us pray together a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Let us pray. At this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And all my friends, I ask you to please pray for me I need a break, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be gone for about a week and a half, um, celebrating a, a, the wedding of a very good friend and visiting my family and just getting outside a little bit. So I will not be around for about a week and a half. 
Uh, so please say a prayer for me for, um, for some rest and relaxation. Uh, and just, uh, I get to meet my nephew, which is great. And I get to see my friend Teresa and her fiance Ben married, uh, which I will celebrate that wedding. So please say a prayer for me. And um, I can't wait to be back, but I need rest. <laughs> so thank you for your prayers. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you now and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.